Hello, I'm Dennis Neal at the International Vatican Conference, and we're here today with Dr. David Sinclair to talk about the idea of reversing aging. Dr. Sinclair, in medicine, so many conferences are narrowly focused. How is this one different, and why is that important? Well, aging is a, a large topic that covers many different fields, including most major age-related diseases, from diabetes to cancer to heart disease. The reason it's important that we come together to talk about aging is that aging is the major driver of these diseases. We forget about that, that the risk of cancer with smoking goes up fivefold, but with aging, it goes up many hundredfold. To tackle aging, we need multidisciplinary approaches from computing through to medicine, of course, drug development. And so we need a lot of us to come together. All the simple problems have been solved, solved on the planet. And this is one of the big ones. Um, and so a conference like this is essential for us to tackle a problem like aging. Can we really permanently reverse aging and how? Well, if you asked me that five years ago, I would have said uh, we cannot permanently reverse aging. Um, and I don't think the word permanent is correct, but we can reverse aging. We have shown it in my lab and others. We just published a paper in December of last year in the journal Nature that showed that we could reset a complex tissue in an animal. It was a mouse, admittedly, but we think the same systems exist in our body. And what we showed in those mice, it was that we could reverse uh, blindness in those mice, those old mice, by re reversing the clock in the cells of the eye. And it, the eye is nothing special. We think we can reverse aging in other parts of the body as well. And eventually we could have treatments that could either be an injection or a pill that could reset the body by a decade or more uh, and keep redo redoing that time and time again. So we're on the verge of answering that question, can we truly reset aging uh, multiple times? And if we can do that, then the world will be a very different place, of course. We could live many decades longer in a healthy way. Now, for years we've been taught that stress on the mind and the emotion can lead to illness. And yet what you experts were talking about today is that physical stress can actually help uh, reverse or retard aging, is that right? Right, well, stress has a few different meanings. I prefer to talk about it as biological adversity. So we want our bodies to think that we're under a threat, that we're being chased by a lion, so we're running on a treadmill, that we're running out of food, so we don't eat three meals a day. We might skip some meals or eat a smaller meal. And what that does is it, it puts our bodies in a defensive state. We have a, a few dozen longevity genes in our body, but the problem is that if we're always fed and we're sitting in chairs all day, those genes don't get switched on to their maximum and we decay and decline and get aging much more quickly. But the good news is that roughly 80% of our health in old age is up to how we live our lives. And we can really make a big difference by doing those small things. Could you give us three tips that you would tell your mother that she could do now to help reverse or delay aging? Yeah, well, I, I literally do tell uh, my parents, my, my father is a big advocate of this type of research. And he's been following this for about a decade. He's now 81, in perfect health, no diseases, mentally uh, sharper than I am. And so the three things that he's been doing are to eat less often, uh, so he eats one normal meal a day and maybe half a meal for, for lunch, skips breakfast. He walks a lot uh, and also works out at the gym. So he's keeping his muscles uh, nice and, and strong so he doesn't fall and break a bone, which is a large cause of mortality in elderly people. And he has a social life. He keeps his brain active. He has friends. And these three things uh, are some of the very simple things you can do to live up to a decade longer. Okay, it sounds simple. And now it's just up to us to do it. Thank you for being with us today, Dr. David Sinclair. You're welcome. Stay safe and continue to mask up.